Dan Senor is a longtime Republican analyst and a former advisor to House Speaker Paul Ryan. He's been in touch with Republican members of Congress since last night's GOP loss. Dan, good morning. Good morning I stayed Gail. up late. I could not go to bed. I couldn't yeah, believe what I was both. watching. So you were talking to GOP members. What are they saying? And sort it out to us. How big is this? Well, most Republican members, including the leadership, are relieved. I mean, Paul Ryan and Mitch they, I'm not going to. I'm not going to quote people specifically, but generally they are relieved because they recognize that. They're heading into a tough year in 2018. The House in particular is really up for grabs. And the last thing they want is the Democrats to be able to tell every Republican on every ballot, you own Roy Moore. So in that sense, Roy Moore, Roy Moore not getting elected is a big win. That said, it is a wake-up call. You know, Alabama, Donald Trump won by won with 62 percent of the vote, all right? Mm -hmm. If you look at the exit polls, voters who turned out in yesterday's election their view of Trump is way down. The, Trump's approval rating among voters who turned out in Alabama yesterday, 48 mm percent. -hmm. This is one of the most Republican states in the country. Democrats have outperformed this year so far in special elections in Georgia and South Carolina, in Montana in Virginia. A conventional Republican, Ed Gillespie, lost by nine points. Democrats are raising money and they're recruiting candidates for a lot of congressional offices. Yesterday's a reminder that Republicans may have a rough road in, in 18. I've never seen a Democratic senator elected that so many Republicans cheered for right. because of what happened. What does this mean for the future of Steve Bannon, the president's former top political director? Well, I think it's a big step back for Steve Bannon and the president in that, first of all, the idea that Bannon can, like, sort of select a slate of candidates and have, they, have, they have the Bannon back, backing, that's all it's going to take. I think that myth has been punctured. And for the president, I think it's a reminder that he is this unique political uh, animal. You know what I mean? The idea that people could become mini Trumps. You know, there's this idea that I'll just run like Trump ran and I'll win. Right. It doesn't work. Right. Trump is this unique uh, character in American politics and it doesn't necessarily transfer and he doesn't necessarily have coattails. Mm -hmm. But you, you said it's a wake up call, but is it a wake up call to President Trump that he needs to change his behavior because he's going to be on the ballot in 2018 in every one of these races? Or is it a wake up call to the establishment Republicans who need to try and find distance, though you can't, from a president? I think it's both. I think congressional Republicans, that's why I think you're going to see even more urgency to get this tax reform bill passed. Mm -hmm. Even though it would be a win for Trump, they just need to show we're getting stuff done, we're doing things. Republicans want people to show say we are actually legislating, we are governing sort of with or without Trump's craziness. I think it is a massive wake-up call for President Trump. I mean, I just think everyone's saying his approval ratings are low, his approval ratings are low. He's governing as though he's just governing the base of his party. Yesterday was is sort of yeah, dated. Dan, more than data. You're still tweeting this morning about I was right. I knew he couldn't win the general election. All right. Well, it's hard to say when you came out and started campaigning. One of the reasons yes. that that Doug Jones won was the women's vote, and you see a record number of women yeah. running for Congress. And, the black and now vote you have, too. and now you have a record number of senators uh, and legislators, women calling for Donald Trump to resign based yeah. on this issue after he essentially, in in Senator Warren's. Uh, words slut shamed right. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. Right. Where's the Republican Party on that? Uh, I'm look. I think the Republicans have a lot of uh, female candidates that they've recruited. There's a lot of female members of Congress. Everyone from you know Elise Stefanik, who's the you know the youngest member of Congress woman. I mean they've in, in the Tennessee race. Marsha Blackburn is running for Bob Corker seat. I'm not worried about women candidates running. Republicans are worried about. You see, in 2016, when Republicans thought. That Hillary, or sorry, when Democrats thought that Trump would be such a drag on the ticket, mm -hmm. they missed the moment and didn't recruit enough high quality candidates of either gender. Right. So, so there wasn't an opportunity to really kind of put quality Democrats on the ballot. They missed the, the filing deadlines. Yeah. That is not the case. No. Just as 538.com estimates right now, Democrats have recruited 249 candidates to run for Congress. Those numbers are massive. Yeah. We got to go. We'll oh. talk about those in the future. Thanks, right. Dan. And it'll be interesting to happen with Roy Moore, who rode in on a horse and ended the night calling on God and Jesus. Wow. Be interesting <laughs> to see what happens there. Thank you very much. <laughs> good to be you. with you guys. <laughs> Always good to be with right. you. Yeah, bringing in the horse image. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Mm -hmm. It was an image. It was an image.